episode of The Scoop. We talk about how the Spanish subverted tradition and how Marcelo H. Del Pilar subverted back. Now, even if it's been 300 years, we still feel the effects. So for the first concept of tradition and subversion, when we think of colonialism, we usually think of the physical consequences or the physical harms that Spain brought to us. So things like the encomienda system, which was pretty much slavery to the native Filipinos, and the harass, the, the sexual assault and abuse that fr- uh, Spanish friars uh, did to the Filipino women. But another, uh, another aspect that is usually not talked about is the cultural effects of the Spanish uh, colonization. Because sure, a lot of the times they tried to erase our culture, but this also argued they tried to hijack our culture as well in order to fit their agenda. So what do I mean when uh, I talk about hijacking and subversion? Russell Meharis talks about in his writing on Stalking the Virgin, where he tries to discuss the genealogy of the many iterations of the Virgin Mary uh, across the Philippine provinces. There is a distinct correlation between the presence of local diwatas, or Filipino goddesses, and uh, the Virgin Mary. So what's an example of this? So before the Spanish arrived, most of the Filipinos believed that many of the their ancestral lands were blessed by diwatas, or goddesses. So when the Spanish arrived, they took that very same belief but changed out the diwata for uh, the concept of the Virgin Mary. Because, you know, two Filipinos, they look the same. They're both two godly women who, were, who had magic powers. So to the native Filipinos, the concept of the Dewata was just replaced with the Virgin Mary. So what, what, did this, what did this do in terms of Spanish power? So number one, this gave the Spanish legitimacy because if Filipinos believed that the Virgin Mary was holy be- was a holy being and the Spanish painted themselves as working for the Virgin Mary, like fighters of Catholicism, therefore the Spanish uh, soldiers and government officials gained legitimacy and it quelled and it removed the resistance spirit from a lot of native Filipinos. So this notion would carry on even to this day because a lot of barangays and barrios or even street names or things like LRT, MRT stations are still influenced by Spanish culture. So for example, Guadalupe Station in the MRT, it's near the uh, parish of Guadalupe. So a lot of names like that are still present now. So the effects are still uh, felt nowadays. But so this is when we introduce the second concept of power and resistance. The very same tools that the Spanish used to divert the culture was also used by Filipino artists, writers, and literature to try to subvert Spanish rule. So everybody knows about uh, Jose Rizal in writing Nolim Patanga and El Filipisterismo, but Rizal wasn't alone in combating Spanish and combating the Spanish through writing. He had allies like the famous painter Juan Luna with his Polarium, and also, but what we'd like to focus on today would be Marcelo H. Del Pilar's. Uh, Libro ng Pagdadasal, or his mock prayer book. So, the prayer book during Del Pilar's time was a staple of Filipino life because the prayer book was what you read during Mass or what you read during Novenas or during the Rosaries. So, what Del Pilar did was subverse, or subvert the prayers or like edit them in a way that poked fun at the Spanish and that called out the Spanish abuses. So when Filipinos were already accustomed to prayer books and they read these prayer books that made one of the Spanish, uh, they were able to understand the oppression that's been happening to them for centuries. And it fostered the nationalism of Filipinos and led to things like the Philippine Revolution. And that notion of using culture to fight oppression can still be felt today. So uh, in artists like uh, Glock 9, Collateral, um, they use the modern medium of, of, of uh, st- things like rap or, or yeah, rap to highlight the injustices in present Philippine society, like the extrajudicial killings. So what does this mean? Culture has been used as a tool for oppression, but the very same tool can be used as a weapon to fight against oppression. Art is meant to comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfort comfortable and we should always remember that when we pass by Guadalupe station or we hear a rap song on the radio just how we got here at the first place <laughs>